Something out there is killing man's best friend. He was built just like a hyena. In central Maine, there's been these stories for probably over a hundred years of some kind of large animal decimating other animals. History supports the idea of unknown hybrid or mutant canines. The hybridization of wolves with domesticated dogs it has been known to happen. Now, there could be evidence. I knew this creature was real and now I have proof. Science explores the probability and uncovers a strange image. I see something, the, the horse carcass is covered up with snow, but there's some kind of an image on the back side of the horse. Witnesses around the world report seeing monsters. Are they real or imaginary? Science searches for answers on Monster Quest. There are an estimated 73 million pet dogs in the United States. And something may be hunting them. A mutant canine reported across the country, but primarily in Maine and Minnesota. The head wasn't dog-like, it was cat-like. Um, it had a really horrible smell. Pointy ears, a long nose, big teeth, and like hair coming out of his nose. It looked uh, more wolfish or possibly husky, malamute, something. And the worst thing that got me going is that the, the shape of this sucker. Big as a collie, maybe even bigger. And he had long black and gray hair. Most modern eyewitnesses describe a canine-like beast about 120 pounds with a flat snout, broad hunched shoulders, short mangled ears, and a bushy tail. A description not unlike a beast reported centuries earlier. Now I've got reports uh, from Native Americans, from folklore, from colonial times, back two, three hundred years. Lauren Coleman is one of the world's leading cryptozoologists with almost 50 years experience in the field. Author of Mysterious America, Coleman is very familiar with the mutant beast stories. You have these reports of rather large wolf-like animals, almost like they're prehistoric dire wolf kind of creatures. About the same weight as the modern gray wolf, the dire wolf had a much larger broad head with massive teeth for crushing bone. Its legs were also shorter, supporting a thicker, more sturdy body. Experts say the dire died out 10,000 years ago, but modern eyewitnesses report a similar creature. August 12, 2006, Turner, Maine, located 50 miles from Portland, Maine. Michelle O'Donnell was with her dog, Bucko. One afternoon, I was sitting at my dining room table and my dog was going off. I looked out and saw an animal run across my yard and stop at a banking up on the far side of my driveway. I ran out the door and I got probably 10, 15 feet away from it and we just locked eyes and I went to take a step closer and it bolted off and my husband saw it run off through the back part of the yard and we'd never seen anything like that before in our lives. O'Donnell described the beast as wild-looking, but not a wolf. It had large jaws and huge eyes. It was also much larger than any dog she had seen before. Confused by what she observed, Come on. Michelle began to research animals on the internet, but could not find anything that matched what she saw. However, only a few days later, after receiving a tip from a neighbor, she discovered the creature's body only two blocks from her home. When I walked up to the animal and I looked down, I knew it was exactly what I saw the week before. There was no doubt in my mind. This is the area where we found the animal and I came to take pictures. It came to lay to rest right here. It was probably about this 
wide, full length of the body, maybe about a yard, yard and a half. These are the pictures. The heavy body and large jaws look like a dire wolf, but not the flat nose, bug-like eyes, and locked ears. A few days later, she decided to send the photos to a local newspaper, where reporter Mark Laflamme of the Lewiston Sun Journal got his first look at the so-called Turner Beast. She sent me an email, asked me if I was interested in seeing photos of the animal. And I, I went out there and she had several high quality photos. I looked them over and nothing I could identify. It was a strange looking creature to be sure. Take a couple bait pails down with us. For Laflamme and many other local residents, the bigger question is, are there more of these mutant canines out there? In an effort to find out, Laflamme has enlisted the support of local animal control officer, Wendell Strout. Right there. Go over there and see if we can, that, that tree is big enough to strap the camera on, and then we'll put the bait over there on the pile. Together, they will deploy a number of motion-activated game cameras. Make, this, make sure this is all powered up right. I'm going to put it in test mode. We'll go to, what did we put on the other one's mark? Three? Yeah, that's good. They will also set baited live game traps in and around the area where the mutant carcass was found. Let's put the bait in here, Mark. Oh yeah, it looks good too. That uh, looks nice. You can go on this end? Yeah, this goes right in here. That's it, and it's all set. You can leave it. The old is probably good. It's getting warmer out. So yeah, it'll probably attract something. Well, I think there's a lot of people who, who really feel that there's something exotic or mysterious out there and you know, the, the Turner Beast aside, there's something, if there's something still roaming out there, I think it's, you know, in everybody's best interest to find it, find out whatever it is and learn as much as we can about it. Michelle O'Donnell's photos are not the only evidence of a mutant canine. The Shunka Waranki is a creature that we know from Montana. This photo is the only proof of the Shunkawarakeen. This Iowa Amerindian name means to carry off dogs. In the 1880s, a Montana ranger claimed he killed the strange animal, had it stuffed and displayed. This picture appeared in a book in 1977, the only evidence of the claim since the stuffed specimen had disappeared. It was very much like the, the main mystery creature, having large haunches, wolf-like uh, scruffy fur, uh, and it doesn't quite look like a wolf. Neither did the creature sighted in Rolog, Minnesota, located about 220 miles from Minneapolis. An eyewitness says a mutant canine is terrorizing his farm and killed his pet dog. A little over six years ago, the neighbor went into a nursing home and uh, I told him I'd take care of his, his Jack Russell Terrier. My neighbor Palmer had named him Fifi and I didn't think that was quite manly enough, so I just called him Fief. Wendell Olson has been a farmer all his life. It's a peaceful living, except for one night in September of 2006. Mm. And I put him out uh, one night, and he just uh, disappeared. I grabbed the flashlight and went around looking everywhere for it. And uh, I suppose it was about 10 minutes after it disappeared, uh, just to the south of the house here, I heard some uh, kind of a yelpish uh, scream and then some gasping. You know, I've never quite heard anything like it. Uh, it was kind of a breathy type of scream. 
and then it, it would just went quiet. So I assume that's it was dying. You know, something was biting it or choking it in some way. He never did find the hey, body. Thief! Hey boy! Hey boy! Hey thief! Where are you? Hey boy! Searched everywhere for uh, a week. Uh, the first three days, I hardly got any sleep looking for the dog. I called everybody, called the Humane Society, tried to cover all the bases, and uh, walked through the woods with my other dog, and I could not find a, a hair or any sign of the dog. You know, I kind of feel that I failed on my promise to Palmer to take care of his dog when he had to die that way. So I, I, I do not feel good about it at all. The mystery on Wendell's farm deepens. About one month after Fief went missing, another attack occurred. This time, the victim was much larger. Wendell Olson's dog, Fief, is gone, fallen victim to an unknown predator. And I put him out uh, one night and he just uh, disappeared. One month later, Olson's farm is hit again. This time, the victim is a 700-pound colt, one of the animals Fief had been protecting. I have stallions up in the yard, and I had just moved the mares to a closer pasture. But there was an awful lot of whinnying all night long. Uh, but I thought, well, it's just because the mares are closer. But I, I went out in the morning, and uh, the horses were all standing on the opposite end of the pasture and the little one was missing. And I looked over there at the other opposite edge towards the woods and there it was laying there. And I figured, well, is it sick? Uh, you know, and then the closer I got, I could see it wasn't in a natural position. Then I, when I got up to it, the entire throat and the ear was missing. A local Department of Natural Resources agent came out to investigate the incident and believes the culprit is most likely dogs or coyotes. But Wendell does not agree. Four weeks later, he saw the beast. I was out cutting alfalfa and I was looking at nine deer uh, grazing on the edge of the field and all of a sudden they scattered and I got a glimpse of something that went over the hill uh, by the deer and I just got like two jumps of it but it looked bigger than a coyote uh, it looked uh, more wolfish or possibly husky malamute something the gray wolf or timber wolf is well established in Minnesota. In 2007, it was even taken off the state's endangered species list. Wildlife officials estimate there are over 3,000 timber wolves in Minnesota. The largest weigh in at over 150 pounds and as a pack are capable of taking down a one ton buffalo. While timber wolves are common in the northern forests of Minnesota, they are rarely seen in the more open western plains near Rolog. At nearly three times the size of an average coyote or dog, a timber wolf could be responsible for the attack. Wendell has called in the support of wildlife and optics expert Craig Enervold. There is something Enervold has to see. Sure. Woods and water and and there's actually no field down there, nothing's mm -hmm. past it, so it's pretty wild. They've been back here, there's not much left of it. So they've been here quite a bit. A deer, freshly killed. They scan the area for evidence. You clearly see it was coyote tracks. Coyote tracks could indicate the deer was killed by coyotes or just that coyotes had feasted on the dead body. Either way, the carcass is bait for whatever else may be out there. I think with all the activity you've got actually behind here, I think that on that tree there facing right over the top of the kill would be probably an ideal spot to put that camera. Okay. All right, well, I've got the batteries replacing this one here and everything seems to be working okay. The settings are right for the, what we're gonna have for our setup here. We've got a great location in here to set this one up on. We've got the, uh, the kill site's about 10 feet from the tree, which will be a perfect location. An active feeding site should bring predators in from miles around, within range of the cameras. But even with a good photo, an animal's identity can be hard to determine. This is the case with the turn of beast photos taken by Michelle O'Donnell in Maine. One detail that's intriguing is the tasseled ears. 
In 1906, the Lewiston, Maine Daily Sun reported that something had been seen lurking in the fields, menacing local pickers. It was described as brown, with tasseled ears. They called it the Engine Devil. Coincidence? Lots of canines have tasseled ears. But if there is a unique creature in Maine, these remains will prove it. These are the actual bones of the creature after it decomposed in O'Donnell's garage. What we have here are the fleshy remains of the carcass. Uh, it's got fur, flesh. Um, we're going to be sending this as well to NYU for further DNA testing. If DNA testing proves it's a unique species, it's a huge find. But it also means there would have to be more than one. While Michelle's samples of the creature are headed to NYU, two other Mainers recall a terrifying run-in in 1991. It's not what they saw, but what they heard. I fell asleep, I think it was around 11. I heard something and I woke up. And I thought, well, it's just the, the curtain scraping the window. So I kind of just blew it off. And then I heard something again. And it really, really scared me. It was like something evil was outside the window. I shook Leo and he woke up. The noise that we heard uh, certainly wasn't something that we've heard before, such as a deer or a moose. What I heard was the breathing, and that's what scared me more than anything. It was a breathing of a creature that had run a long distance. It was snorting from being out of breath. But I tell you what, never heard anything like that ever, and I don't ever want to hear it again. While the Davids never saw the creature, they believe the sounds were not of any native animal. Stories of this nature, in my experience, have always been uh, got huge reaction. And this case was no, this was, was bigger than just about anything I'd written. I know people, you know, they fear the unknown, but they're also fascinated by it. I mean, they 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 want to hear about it. They want to level their own guesses. They want to talk about it with their neighbors. This is something that might be creeping around the, the main woods and in Maine there are a lot of woods so if there's something out there they're obviously going to be interested. There may be a real animal responsible for what the Davids heard that night. A beast they have good reason to fear. For centuries eyewitnesses in Maine have reported mutant canines. One theory they are surviving dire wolves believed to have died out 10,000 years ago. But while the Turner Beast resembles a dire wolf in size and proportion, its hunched shoulders, flat snout, and big eyes seem to point to a beast of an unnatural mix. You get a hybrid dog by mating two dogs. It, it is basically how that happens. It's the same as a mutt. A mutt would be a hybrid to a certain extent. Veterinarian Jay Epping says crossbreeding in many types of animals is now common. A hybrid dog is basically the, the same as a crossbreed. It, it's a mix of two breeds of dogs. All major dog breeds that we have today are all hybrid dogs or crossbreeds. But crossbreeding in the wild is a very different animal. When two species that are close enough can breed and produce a viable uh, you know, offspring, we know about you know, mules and we know about uh, the dolphins and whales and uh, there's a lot of creatures that are hibernizing. To some, the Turner Beast looks like a Chow Rottweiler wolf hybrid. This unique mix could explain the appearance of the beast and its unusual behavior. There's no way to define what you end up with when you mix a wolf and a dog. You may end up, it may, it may be said that you end up with a, a wolf that's less fearful of humans, but what you end up having is an animal about which we know nothing. Wolf expert and executive director of the Wildlife Science Center, Peggy Callahan has seen the results of wolf-dog mixes. 
We don't know their impact on deer. We don't know their impact on livestock, although we can make some assumptions. We don't understand how they handle disease. Is it different than wolves? Is it different than dogs? There are many, many unknowns that, about these creatures. While rare, it is possible for dogs to breed in the wild with wolves. However, niche breeders do mix dogs with wolves in captivity. An animal could have been released intentionally or accidentally into the water. What if one survives and breeds back with wolves? What is that creature going to be called? And, and what are we going to expect physically and behaviorally from that creature? Depending on what type of dog is mixed with the wolf, the offspring's color, size, and general appearance can vary greatly. The DNA samples at NYU will hopefully reveal the genetic background of the Turner Beast. But can it explain the other sightings in Maine or in Minnesota? There may be a more natural explanation for some accounts. Some experts believe the creature may be part of the weasel family. The fisher can grow to four feet long, but is very light in stature and has been known to make a sound